have to do like, uh, I think it was Charles Capps. Some of y'all may not know who he is, but well, he's in heaven now. But Charles said he walk up to somebody sleeping in his church and pour water on him. I, I, I try that one of y'all. Y'all won't fight. One thing about Life Point is there's some fighters in this group. There are some fighters in here. Feisty and fighters. Amen. You better be a fighter because life will push you around and shove you back so many times and you'll be laying on the deck bloodied and bruised and can't figure out which way is up. You better learn to fight. I mean, certainly you don't fight with weapons of flesh and blood. Amen. You fight, fight with what? Spirit. That's right. It's good. The word. Amen. Praise God. Delighted that you're here today. Forgive me. I'm just trying to get some things in order. Uh, certainly want to welcome all of you. It's good to see you. Just like to make eye contact, you know. Good. good. It is still morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Hey, Amen. I saw you the other day. You didn't see me. Hey, Amen. Better be careful. <laughs> Better be careful. Did you see me? Oh, so you just didn't speak. Is that what? No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, girl. You know I'm kidding. Amen. Amen. I, I know. I got it. I got it. I was parked next to the car. Amen. So, amen. Delighted that you're here today. Certainly glad. I am extra delighted that Kathy's mom is here. Um, she is such a blessing. Um, she's, she's old school. Look at her waving. She's old school, but she loves the Lord. And uh, when you look at mom, you can see where that the apple did not fall far, far, far from the tree. <laughs> And uh, somebody said, y'all look just alike. I was walking up behind somebody and said, y'all look just alike. So anyway, yeah, that's what moms and sis daughters usually do. I almost said sisters. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I want to welcome our YouTube audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is uh, the first Sunday in December 2018. We're getting ready to embark on a new year very shortly. Thank you for taking the time to tune into this broadcast, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching it uh, as a recording. We certainly appreciate it. We are located, we are LifePoint Christian Faith Center, located at 1221st Avenue, temporarily, in the city of Coralville, Iowa. It is our great pleasure to bring the Word of God to you. That's all we have. That's what we bring. We apply faith with it, and it always works. So we encourage you to take some notes. Get something to listen with, listen real good, and just be encouraged by the message that you hear. We believe that it was not a coincidence, but it was by the leading of the Holy Spirit that you tune in. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our YouTube audience to that? Amen. 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 Uh, I want to, I, I've got, I'm concluding some things here. I'm not going to do it all today, but I'm on that conclusion downslope, if you will. Um, my messages don't take weeks. They take years to get done. Um, but some of y'all get that later. But anyway, uh, it is a continuation of what God has laid on my heart uh, regarding the potential in every seed. Last, year, uh, last week we were here, and for those of you that were able to make it out, we had a great time. Uh, we laid hands on and appointed several ministers to a full-time uh, ordained ministry. So, uh, and that is a big deal. It's a big deal in this church, but it's a big deal in our society. And so we're delighted for them. You can give them another hand for those that are here. Amen. Because the work, the work has just begun in their lives. And I can tell you firsthand uh, with uh, the knowledge that I have that being in the ministry is not for everyone in terms of full-time ministry I'm talking about. Amen? amen? Being a minister is for everyone. Yes. Say amen to that. Okay? Minister means to what? Serve. Just serve. Simply serve. So you are called to serve each other and others that are not here. Um, but with that being said, the ministers, those that are ordained into the to the ministry, for example, the bells and others that are that are here, um, you're going to have to learn that sacrifice is part of it. <clears throat> A lot of people don't want to pay the price of sacrifice. Amen. But sacrifice is what gets rewarded. God rewards sacrifice and diligence by faith. Can you say amen to that? Let's pray and we'll get into the word and we'll see where the Holy Spirit takes us this morning. My father, I give you praise. I acknowledge the headship, lordship, and the fact that you are truth, that you are savior of my soul. I also acknowledge my reliance and need for Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. You are my guide, my friend. You are the one that I rely on more than my own ability. I have nothing to offer to you today, Father, except my tongue and my heart and these lips of clay. I pray that you would speak through me as an oracle of God. I yield myself 
beyond the criticism of the day, I yield myself to the truth and reality that Jesus Christ is Lord. And not only that, but you're coming back again. So we want to be that church as we prepare for a great outpouring, awakening, revival, some would call it. We want to be that church that you find without spot or wrinkle. I pray right now, Father, for the ability of the Holy Spirit to just minister and walk the, walk the chairs and touch hearts individually. You do that well. And I pray that they that have ears to hear would hear. Let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. If you agree with that prayer, can you say amen for me? Amen. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Galatians. I won't belabor the time to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Um, there's some things I want to uh, get across to you by God's grace. And if you'll pray for me, we'll get there with more ease. Amen. We call that utterance. Can you say that word utterance? Utterance means the divine ability to speak by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there are a lot of people that don't like that term because they feel like you're being too spiritual. But if I can tell you who you are this morning, you are a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul. And that soul is made up of three primary parts, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen. And so with that being said, you are more spirit than you are flesh. So as you sit here today, you may think, well, I don't want to be that spiritual. Well, then you're missing out a good part of this life because this, this life here is temporary. It's transitory and it is, it is at best uh, filled with challenges. Come on now. Uh, victory is always available to us, but we have to understand the, the place of this life. This life is not for you to just hoard up and, and wait and get all kinds of things materialistically or anything like that. This life is a proving ground. This, this life is a, it's almost, I don't want to say it's a test facility because that would probably too simplify it. But, but if you don't get it right here, you don't get to go there and live with him eternally, right? And the choice, to, the choice to be who God has called you to be is made where? Right here. Right here. There's no such thing as purgatory. There's no, there's no uh, reincarnation. You know, I'm not coming back as a donkey. If, if I wasn't a donkey when I left, I'm not going to be a donkey when I come back. Amen. So what, what happens, and you don't become angels. Come on. I mean, you know, I, I hear people say all the time, well, oh, God needed another angel. No, he's got plenty. You don't need, you know. So but with that being said, it's one thing for people to say that and hear it. And they do. They hear the concept religiously. But but tell me how that works on a practical level. That's what I want to do as we as we get into Galatians five here and ultimately conclude with Galatians six. Uh, but Galatians five starts off. Gentlemen, if you would do me a favor, I would like on the board Galatians five, <clears throat> excuse me, beginning at verse six. Well, give me verse five. That's just easier. Uh, Galatians five. Verse five. And you can just I want that from the King James Version, please. And I, we apologize that it might be hard to see. But with the lights being the way they are, we kind of have to go with that. Um, I'm going to read this from the expanded Bible. If you have Galatians five, verse five, can you say amen? amen. Would you start my time if you're not already done so, please? Galatians five. Verse five says, for by the spirit. And through faith, we wait eagerly for a right relationship with God by the spirit. And through faith, we wait eagerly for a right relationship with God. Right now, can you tell me what with a one word definition, what does right relationship mean? One word. Come on, y'all know this. So who somebody said it? I heard it. I heard it over here somewhere. I can't. But you're too, saying it too low. I just heard somebody say it over here. Speak up. Righteousness. Righteousness. We are waiting for righteousness, the, the Apostle Paul says here, right? By faith. Don't miss that part. By faith. Righteousness does not come by feeling. Righteousness does not come by uh, how you dress or how you act. Righteousness, listen to me, righteousness has very little to do with a mental state. Most of us, if we be honest, we feel more righteous on Sunday than we do any day, other day of the week. Come on, y'all ain't got to say amen. I know it's true. But what, what we deal with for the other six days is what determines really how successful we're going to be in the kingdom. And how we approach it. Isn't that right? How we approach that, that's what's going to determine. Now, let me say this, and you can write it down. You and I, if you're born again, if you're not born again, Okay, you need to get born again. If I wasn't born again, you know what I'd do? 
I get saved, get born again, when would I do it? Now. now what you waiting on, okay? But if you're not born again, the only way this, you, are, you cannot find yourself in Galatians 5, and listen to me well, the only absolute way that you cannot find yourself in Galatians 5 is if you are not born again. Because your righteousness was not contingent upon anything other than God's love for you. Hold your place there. Turn to Romans 8 and 1 for me, please. Uh, Romans 5 and 1. Hold your place right there. I'm only going to glance over it. I just hear the Lord say something, so I'm going to show you something. Because I, I know what I confront and what I deal with more than anything else is religious ideology and religious training. And you guys, like me, uh, most of you have, have been trained religiously. And so that religious mindset constantly battles against who you are in Christ. I've got people that don't like me because I preach the way I do or teach the way I do because I'm not going to put legalism on you. If I do, you need to run. You need to run, scream, kick, holler. Don't let anybody put legalism on you. Don't let anybody tell you you have to dress a certain way to come to church. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to pray a certain amount of times in order to be accepted to God. Don't let anybody tell you that stuff. It is not true. And I'm going to tell you something else on the flip side. Don't let some other man, some man, be the one who is your intermediary between you and God where you got to stand in the booth and tell him what's going on. Both of them are wrong. I wish I could get a better amen than that. Romans 5, 1, since we have been made right with God. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Since we have been made right with God, right, past tense, by what? Faith. What does the King James say? Therefore being justified by faith. Justification means righteousness. It means that the penalty for sin has already been paid. Now you go out here trying to keep paying the penalty for sin, you're going to miss heaven. Come on. Until you realize that, you know what, this has been paid. Are you with me this morning? I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple. So you see, therefore being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, what you need to be telling people, if they're born again, if they're not born again, ask them why they're fighting God. And if they are, if they are born again, say, t say to them, listen, listen, walk in the peace that God has given you. The war is over. Come on, right? Now, clearly... The war is over. Turn back over to, to Galatians for me, please. The war is over, but the battle is not. Huh? So what am I, if I'm not fighting, I'm not fighting God, you wouldn't win anyway. I don't know how anybody could get that concept in their, in their thinking, but, you know, you're not fighting God. So since you're not uh, fighting God, you know, since that war is over, then what battle do I have to fight? I have to fight the battle in my mind. The only way the battle in your mind is going to work is by faith. The battle in your mind, listen, you can fight battles physically and still lose mentally and emotionally. So what God is doing is he's trying to get the renewal process through the Apostle Paul to take root so that when I wake up in the morning, no matter what I feel, no matter what I see in front of me, I am still righteous. Mm. If you override righteousness, then there's a word for that, too. We find in 1 John 1 and 9. What is it? <laughs> Say with me, repentance. Oh, I didn't get enough participation. <laughs> if you override righteousness, because you can override it. You know how you override it primarily? It's by not applying faith. That's why Paul says sin will not have dominion over me. Doesn't mean you're not susceptible to it, but it, it means clearly that he's already given you the victory. You have positionally been placed above sin. Yes. I, I feel like it's just about, because you have been made righteous with Christ. Yeah. If I could draw you an illustration, I could draw this illustration and I could be spiritually correct, if not physically so. I could see God the Father on the throne at his right hand, my right, your left, at his right hand, who? Jesus. Come on, say it like you know it. And if we're going to positionally put anybody on the left side, who's it going to be? Thank you. I thought somebody was going to say Holy Spirit. He can't be there. He's in us. God help me. But you and I are seated. Huh? No, we're on the left if we're anywhere or in his presence. Doesn't matter. Who cares if it's left, center? Uh, who cares? We've been seated. We've been made to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And the only thing that will keep us from not not walking in that is because we have simply not received revelational teaching about our position in Christ. That's why you can't be an old sinner saved by grace. That's why you can't do enough good deeds to get to heaven. 
Because it has nothing to do with your flesh. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, mind renewal. Mind renewal. By the word. By the word. Mind, renewal. mind renewal. By the word. By the word. And without the word, you just, you, you, a wiggly uh, worm, uh, 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 old sinner saved by grace. If you're not going to apply the word, then you're in trouble. Because you'll never ascend to the place where God wants you to be. Y'all got that? Okay, let's, let, where did I leave you off at? Galatians 5. What verse did I read? Did I read 5. Let's start at 6. When we are in Christ Jesus, it is not important if we are circumcised or not. I'll come back to in just a second. Everybody, well, let me stay here. Because some of y'all, I, I, I don't want to override the, the, the Christian language that's used here. Circumcision is what? Literally, it's the cutting of the flesh. What does it mean? It is. It's a Jewish law. What else does it mean? What is, why, did, why did God tell Abraham, make Abraham circumcise his, his sons, his, his family? Sign of the covenant. It's the establishment and the sign thereof of a covenant. OK, now, once the covenant, we've talked about this because Galatians three talks about the covenant from a standpoint of our victory, because the Bible says that we we are we are no longer under the law. It's, it goes on to say that cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham. We talked about that. Right. You should know that should would come upon one us uh, upon what us, the Gentiles. Now, why is that? How does that happen? Because of circumcision. Now. There is two types of circumcision. We just talked about the first one. What's the second one? Circumcision of the heart. Who talks about that? Paul. Right. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing that these principles and these in order to get where God wants you to be, you can't do it without him. It's just impossible. People that think they can live lives, uh, we've got friends like that, think they live good lives and they just kind of go about their day and they have no acknowledgement of God, no, no uh, inclination towards God. They're not inclined toward him at all. And, and they think that they're good people. And if they're not, if they don't, don't apply the, both the old, which we've already know Jesus has dealt with, but the new covenant to their hearts, they'll never, they'll never, they'll never make it to God. So you can live and die and be a, a relatively good person. And still go to hell. That's sad. And why would somebody do that? Because they don't have information. And what the devil does is he keeps them away from churches by the millions. And what he'll do is he'll send them to some place where it's it's a it's a gospel of inclusionism or or uni, uh, um, universal universalism where everybody's going to heaven. And that ain't true. If, if that were true, why are, we, why are we serving Jesus? Right? Why serve Jesus if everybody's going to heaven? Jesus come, die, everybody go to heaven. But when people don't understand, they, they start missing here what we're talking about in, in Galatians 5, 5, 6. Because what happens is it says that the important thing is faith. The kind of faith, the faith that works through love. Now, yeah, Lord. Let me keep going. OK, verse seven. You were running a good race. This, this is Paul talking to the Galatians again. You guys remember that, right? Who stopped you from following the true way? Or your conviction about truth, another translation says. Who stopped you? Can you answer the question for me? When people stop serving God. Because. Mm, I know I know some of your thinking because I know I know how my thinking used to be. When you stop seeing people in church, doesn't mean they stop serving God. It is a precursor for many people to stop serving him. But it does not mean that they've stopped serving him. Now, what you do see is certain things and I'll get into in just a minute. There are certain things that add value to our life. And certain things that will never have any true value because they don't come from the realm of the spirit. Again, I got to be careful. They used to tell us you can't go to movies. What they really were intending to tell us, is what they should have said in a way, if, I, if we were wording it today, be careful out there because there's some movies you don't need to see. But when you exclude me from a whole segment of my world... My curiosity is peaked, and what's the first thing I want to go out and do? <laughs> Sit down and watch a movie. Now, if I don't have, listen now, if I'm not educated in this, 
then chances are my curiosity, which is something God gave you. You're not just nosy. You're curious, too. You will use your curiosity in a way that does not seek out God. But what it will seek out is the pleasure of your own flesh. You see the difference? So rather than tell somebody you can't go to the movies, tell somebody that there is something greater in the word to be seen if you're willing to apply yourself a little bit more. Does that make sense? Okay, let's keep going. Verse 7 says you were running a good race. Who stopped you? You did not come through one. I'm skipping down. Verse 8, this change or the enticement of the world did not come from the one who chose you. So verse 9, he says, be careful. Be careful. I think the, the, the King, King James says a little leaven. That's what I thought. A little leaven, leaven if the whole lump. I'm going to read it from this translation. Be careful. Just a little yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise. Just a little bit. Can I, can I break it down to you just a little bit? If you, <laughs> I gotta, I'm trying to think of uh, what I heard years ago. If you play in the mud, you're going to get dirty. If you stick your hand down a gopher hole, you're probably going to get bit. <laughs> in, in, in Texas, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been bitten by red ants, fire ants. That pain is indescribable. If you go, I'm going to use this word intentionally. Y'all don't be religious with me. If you go dinking around with one, a little fire ant hill. I saw one of our dogs in the backyard one time. I was dinking around with something. I was like, what is she doing? And she didn't want to, she didn't want to. I said, come here. What? What? I didn't want to go to her. I didn't feel like it. I'm the master. She the dog. <laughs> but she didn't listen. And next thing you know, ar, 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 I knew what happened. And she had fire ants all over her, her little face. You know? But if you mess with it, it's, it's going to get on. <laughs> huh? So, so now I'm careful about the movies I watch because some of that trash. You know, I, I'm careful about the things I watch on TV because, you know, and I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. Amen. It's going to be hard for you to tell me what to do. Amen. Unless it's already in my, my wheelhouse in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So my point to that is that, you know what? I am the one who selects what I do and do not watch most of the time in my world. Yeah. Or what I don't do and don't hear. Yeah. Now, I'm going to drop one on you. Because I didn't learn this. This is what I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. Until 1993. I learned this in 1993. And I, what I just told you about I'm a grown man and I'm the one who makes the selections, that's what got my life in trouble. Right. And yours too. Yep. Every place you have a problem that is not sourced by the devil is sourced by you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not your neighbor. Because yeah. your neighbor's going to have issue with you. All you got to do is ignore that. Right. Pray. Lay hands. Not this balled up. Lay these hands. Are you hearing me? So, so, but I learned this, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep reading because I don't want to run out of time, and I don't want to hold you guys too long. Verse 8 says, this change did not come from the one who makes the whole batch of dough rise. But I trust, I'm skipping down to verse, uh, verse 10, but I tr trust, hallelujah, in the Lord that you will not believe those different ideas. Whoever is confusing you with such ideas will be punished. We call those false teachers. Amen. Verse 11, my brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching that a man must be circumcised. Now, here we go. Stay with me now. Why am I being attacked? If I still talk about circumcision, my preaching about the cross would not be a problem. Verse 12, I wish the people who are bothering you would castrate themselves. Cut it off, he says. Right. He says, now, that's what the word says. I didn't add that. That says it right here. OK. He says, uh. Why not go even further? My brothers and sisters, God called you to be free. That's verse 13. But do not use your freedom as an excuse to do what pleases your sinful self. Hmm. Look up at me for a minute. Um, although the sin nature of man is general, mankind is general. 
The sins of men and women are not. Think about it for a minute. I'm going to say it. Although the sin nature, everybody's born with a sin nature. We know that, right? Are general to mankind. Sin choices of man, of men and women is specific to the man or woman. I said it a little bit differently, but that makes a little bit more sense. In other words, what is a sin for me not be, may, may not be a sin for you. That's why it's dangerous, dangerous to generalize people and their actions. Yeah, that came straight from the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. I, because ultimately, if I think it's okay to wear two left shoes on Tuesday and you think it's a sin, it's only a sin to you, not to me. If I... I know that's not the best. He said you might not be comfortable, but, but I'm, I'm okay. So, so where, are we, where are we going? Here's where we're going with this. If we're going to really be free, it has to be more than just word and activity on Sunday. Most of my, she'll tell you, most of my waking hours, I, hope, I don't think I'm irreligious. I don't care what y'all think, to be honest with you, because the only thing I, I, I care about what he thinks. Most of my waking hours are not spent at this point in my life studying the word. Okay, I didn't get much response over there. Most of my waking hours, Robert, are not spent studying the word. I'm just being honest with you. Most of my waking hours are not spent in prayer. I spend time in prayer. I spend time in the word, but most of my time is not. So the other Percentage of that, if I throw a number, y'all gonna think I'm real and spiritual, so I'll stop right there. <laughs> the other percentage of that is spent making sure that I am renewing my mind yeah. and believing what God has said about me. Okay. And I have to fight the challenges of my enemy. I do have an enemy, yeah. right? We do have an enemy. And then I'm also fighting the challenges of my mind, yeah. which without renewal, is working against me, telling me I'm not worthy, telling me my bank account is weak, telling me that I'm never going to have a new car, telling me my kids are never going to get born again, telling me that people are not telling me something. Right. And what I what, what I, I have to do is I have to do what Paul's getting ready to tell them that we all have to do. And what I learned back in 1992. Verse 16 is where it's at. So he says, I'm going to put it up here. Walk, King James says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Just leave it up there. Just leave it up there for me. Walk in the spirit. I'm going to help you. How much time I got? Who's got my time? So I tell you, live by following or guided by in the power of the spirit. Then you will not do what your sinful self or your flesh wants. Hmm. Tell you again. I'm going to say it again. So I tell you, live. live. Say live. live. King James says walk. By following or being guided by the spirit. Now that spirit that is guiding you is Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Or proper title, the Holy Spirit. He is the one who's leading your everyday activity, whether but you and I acknowledge it or not. And success comes when we learn to acknowledge it more. Yes. Acknowledge his leading, his presence. Note worth taking. Most of the time, you do not feel his presence in your life. Right. And when you look, that's why when we come to church, now, stay with me now, because I, I hear the Lord take me on a different... I'm going to come back here, but I hear him taking me on different... Most of the churches we grew up in... Now, this, this is a unique church. Look, look, just look around real quick. Y'all know this. Okay, y'all know. Okay. Most of us grew up in churches that in one form or another were more led by the flesh than the spirit. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. In a Pentecostal church... People who were not aware of his presence Monday through Saturday 
would come into the church and because of the presentation of music and prayer and the word, it would cause a reaction in their flesh and they would feel now the presence of the Holy Ghost. And they would think that their, their demonstration, which is cool, it's just who we are. I dance. I don't have any problem with that. But if my dancing is the indicator of his presence, then I'm not dancing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then he ain't there. If I come to the other side of the spectrum, I'm leaving a whole lot out. But if I come to the other side of the spectrum where churches, where people tell you that we first, well, there's a middle port here. We don't believe in him. We don't believe, we believe him only from the standpoint that he's mentioned in scripture, but not necessarily his active participation in my life. Now, how do I know that? Because if you don't believe in the gifts of the spirit, if you don't believe in speaking in tongues, you don't believe in him. Are you feeling me? Well, we believe in him, but we don't believe in those tongues. That's the, he's the one who gifted you. Oh, God, help me. Then, then let me skip to this side of the spectrum. This side of the spectrum is that ceremonial type church where everybody had to sit in a manner that was respectable because if you weren't and you drew attention to yourself, then you were the one who was out of order and everybody else that sat there quietly and, and subdued, you know, this is because this is how we're supposed to be. But the Bible doesn't give you the tell you that no more than it tells this church down here to act riotous and do all this stuff. It doesn't tell this church over here or give her permission to sit and say nothing. I, I don't. So why, where is it that we find ourselves? We find ourselves right back here where the Apostle Paul says that you have to recognize in verse 13, my brothers and sisters, God called you to be free. What does freedom look like? Freedom looks like I am a person of color, not by choice but by birth but if I had the choice I'd still be this and so in my desire to for whatever reason I don't necessarily I mean because we didn't have we couldn't have certain types of music growing up in my house so when I oh god help me okay just toes come in religious masks come up so when Marvin Gaye came on My religion or my lack of understanding didn't know what to do with Marvin Gaye Roger. But my flesh had an inclination to know what to do with Marvin Gaye. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So, 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 so when I was told that, 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 <laughs> that you couldn't listen to certain types of music, again, just like the movie, don't tell me I can't listen to certain types. Tell me why. If you give me why, I can then make a quality decision as to not to or to do. So when I get born again, without this scripture, when I get born again and I come over here to the sedate church and they start playing a song I ain't never heard before. And I'm still a person of color in a predominantly European church. What I'm going to do with that? Oh, yeah, I'm coming where you are this morning. Oh, I've got to make a decision. If I don't know this, then I come over here. And although I believe God sent me to first Episcopalian temple or whatever, I'm not comfortable because I don't know that I can be free wherever I am. Now, when God takes a European, <laughs> sticks them in a predominantly, thank you, <laughs> I can't think of anything better, <laughs> colorful environment, and everybody got rhythm but me, I got a choice to make. Am I going to allow my flesh to tell me that I'm out of place, but yet I know that God is is, is pulling me, inclining me closer to him. Amen. 
but something about it feels strange. It's because you have not locked into your freedom from the Holy Ghost. I don't have to dance like you to be victorious like you. I don't have to look like you to be able to have all that God has promised. My God, if that were the case, but he just said there is neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free nor black nor white nor Asian. It doesn't matter. Why? Because now we are free. All right, let me keep going because I'm running out of time. Y'all got that? Y'all got that, right? Hmm. So, 92, 92, 93, I was struggling extremely hard personally with my salvation because I didn't know, I didn't know that I could walk in the spirit. I didn't know what that meant. And some of you still don't know what it means. I'm going to tell you, let me give you the Tommy Roberts definition of walking in the spirit. Wake up in the morning and say hello to him. Say hello to him, not it, him. Only, only, only unique thing God, God the spirit did was choose not to have a body. But that makes him available to everybody. Another thing you can do is simply when you're walking around the day like I do or if I'm driving in my car, sometimes I just turn the radio off. I turn stuff off and I just, okay. And I just talked to him. Can I tell you that I've said this before many times a long time, I think the greatest voice of the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, this is my opinion. The greatest voice of the Holy Spirit in yours and my lives is going to be who? You. We call it conscience. Please, please, please. We're mature enough now. These, those, those of you sitting in these seats, man, we're very few. You're mature enough now to, to stop saying something told me. Janice, that's a lovely outfit. Now, I'm going to walk over here, and I want you to turn to David and say, something told me that was a lovely outfit. Go ahead. <laughs> See? Seriously. You don't know my name. <laughs> and, it, and it makes us, listen, listen, I'm not trying to be legalistic. I'm trying to help you. What it makes us is it makes us more aware of how righteous we really are. He never stops talk talking to me. <laughs> there's sometimes I, I listen, I, watch my wording. There's sometimes I think I would want him to stop, but truly I never want him to stop. Because if he ever stops, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I got I, something wrong. So that's when people say, well, I don't know what to do. You're not listening. Or you haven't been trained to listen. You know, when you pull up to a stop sign, he's there. He hasn't gone anywhere. So when you pull up to the stop sign, you drive your little sports car up to the stop sign and you determine turn left or right. And you, let's say you go right. How do you think you did that on your own? See? See? I, I can prove it to you. I, I don't have enough time, but I can prove it to you. you. You are a son of God. I can call you son generically. And the Bible says that they that are, are the sons of God, are, they that are led by God are the sons of God. You're led. You're, you're led every day. You're led, you're led to come to church. You're led not to come to church. And I'm going to tell you, when you get led not to come to church, that's more you than it is him. And you can override it. Didn't I just say that you can override? Okay. All right, 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 all right. I gotta keep going. So I tell you, live, walk. So I learned that. And when I learned it, uh, I think I'm gonna conclude with, uh, well. When I learned it was right after we got born again. And in our getting born again, some of you know the story. We moved from, from uh, North Carolina, Fayetteville, North Carolina, to Winston-Salem to be a, uh, attend my, my brother Walter's church at the time and so on and so forth. But I still had not perfected it. So <laughs> when we moved, this is common knowledge, so when we moved to North Carolina, particularly East Spencer, North Carolina, because we were so excited about being in him and not knowing that there are, listen, there are not divine, I, I, I hope I can say this again, so please take notes of it. There are not divine limitations on freedom. Be free. There's not divine limitations. There are man-made and man-imposed limitations on freedom. And I know that to be true, especially with women ministers. Mm -hmm. 
So when I went to East, when we went to East Spencer, I told you, we had, I don't know, I think we were telling the story at the minister's meeting that we had a few weeks ago. We had 17 people in our home. It's ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Now, there was a grace to do it. I'm telling you, don't try this. Have I ever had more than 17 people living with you at one time? Can I see if sure? Why not? Why not? Don't y'all love Jesus? Right? So in living, in doing that, what God did, though, here's what he did. He let his grace be sufficient for us while we were in it. And then when I started hearing him after, after we departed, because we left, we left, uh, you're blessed. We left uh, the 17. No, there was 10. How many? Was there, how many by that time? How many people we leave in that house? Okay, too many. <laughs> True indeed. So we left them and went over here. We left that when we when we got over here, though, when we got over here, we started hearing fine tuning our hearing. And he said, listen, I didn't intend for that, but I brought you through it. Amen. So there are many things that you're going to encounter in life that God doesn't necessarily intend for you to, to walk through. But he's never going to leave you in the middle of it. And you, and, and you have to find that that sweet spot. So what we did is we even we even. Uh, began to fine tune our hearing even more when the Lord said it's time to leave North Carolina and leaving some other stops just for the sake of time. And we went to Texas and we got we got under the ministry of Dr. Jerry Savelle. It was a hard choice because we we left everything behind, you know, except except the kids. <laughs> uh, we left everything behind and all our, our belongings we gave away. Now, listen to me. This is where I'm going with this. When we got to Texas. Some of you know this. One of the first messages I heard, because see, I'm still trying to be free, was, was freedom from religion. Yeah. Dr. Savelle has a series, I don't know if it's still available or not. Last time I checked, I couldn't find it, but it's probably out there if you want it. It's called the Freedom Series, freedom, freedom from poverty, freedom from this, freedom from that. But the one that registered to me was freedom from religion. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was trying to bring me to a place now where I could be free in him. Free man. Now. Thank you, Father. There's two other manifestations that Paul talks about primarily in regards to the spirit. And I'm not going to go any for, further in Galatians today. I don't want to try to rush through this because I, I, I feel the, the urge because the end of year is here. And I feel that the enemy trying to put that. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to resist that pressure. Can I do that? Yes. Freedom. Freedom. Thank you, brother. Somebody listening. <laughs> Good. I mean, anyway. Thank you, Father. Give me, give me 17 up there. I got I to gotta do 17 because it's part of today's message. Give me 17. And I want to read it from here. This is uh, Galatians 5, 17. Now, remember what we just read in 16, though. This is, that's important. Okay, y'all got that, right? The context of that. For, say, my flesh. My flesh lusts against, say, the spirit. the spirit. Do you see that it's capitalized? Yes. Right? Yeah. That capitalization, I started to say infers, but it does more than that, clearly demonstratively states that the Holy Spirit is the one that's being referred to in this verse. Yes. This is a complicated verse. It's more complicated than you'll be able to get and I'll be able to articulate, but it is complicated, but it's one of my favorites. So my flesh, lust, get sexual immorality out of your thinking. Because that's an English and a Western translation of the word lust. What it does, though, is that it craves more than God to be pleased. In other words, my flesh would rather go to the movie than go to God. My flesh would rather eat that extra piece of pie, even though I've already had too many. My flesh would rather do anything but go to church. My flesh would do anything, rather do anything than have a good relationship with my wife. But the spirit wars or lusts against the flesh. Now, who you think going to win? He said it, the one you want to. I'm going to say it, the one you yield to. You keep yielding to the movie. 
And the Holy Spirit's not going anywhere. What he's doing is re-strategizing to find another way to get into your heart and to get into your thinking and let you know, hey, go here, not here. And the spirit against the flesh, these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you, what? Cannot. Not will not, not. Cannot. Do you see that? Anytime we yield more to the flesh, you fill in the blank there. I can't fill it in for you. And less to the spirit, you can't do the will of God. So when people say to me, close your Bibles, when people say to me, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Right here. Right here. You, you, you're, you're yielding to you. You're yielding to you, not to God. When the Bible speaks in absolute terms like this, you can't do the things that you would. Ah, girl, shut up. I was going to tell you this, and I am. You can just write it down. There are two other distinct places, and I'm going to give you that as you go. Go back, verse 16 for me, please. Verse 16 says, from a positive affirmation standpoint, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then the verse, next verse says that obviously that, that flesh is lusting against the spirit. Okay, you get that. But it's a positive, positive uh, affirmation. Now, there's two negatives. I'm going to give them to you, but only for reference. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Don't put it up there. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Ephesians 4.30. Those are both in a negative connotation of the spirit. 519, don't put it up there, please. It tells us to not quench the spirit, which means that he can be suppressed. And then the other place, Paul says in the book of Ephesians, he says not to grieve him. Grieving, grieving to, in my thinking is when, according to Galatians 5, 16, and 17, we stop yielding. He starts being grieved. Grieved is not mad. <laughs> grieved is a place, exactly, a place of wounding. When she said, somebody said, you know, that I look nice in my illustration a few minutes ago, I'm not mad at her. I'm wounded because she didn't talk about me like she knew me. Or we, didn't, we don't talk to each other like you know us. Right. Yeah. You've heard the saying, talk about him like he's in the room? Right. Yeah. This last illustration, I'm finished. You can turn it off. Close your Bibles if you haven't already. Walking in the Spirit means that you are aided and supported by the Holy Ghost. Okay? Right? Would you agree to that? You're aided and supported. He's waging war, so to speak, as it were, to keep you... Uh, in tune with God. And most of us, through the course of a week, feel like we do a, we're failures at it. We just don't get it right. Okay, except for some of y'all super spiritual people. Anyway, think about it like this. I heard this illustration from one of, one of my favorite people who's been long gone. Early, I heard this, and, and it was years ago when I heard it, but I just refreshed my thinking on it not too long ago. Imagine yourself getting on a, a, a locomotive, on a train, on a, a um, passenger train, Amtrak, right? And you're on the train, and you've got a destination to get to. Please, please hear this illustration, because I know it's good. It's from the Holy Ghost. And you're, you've got a destination in mind, and you're on the train. And then something is causing the train not to move. And you've been sitting there, and you get off the train, and you go to the rear of the train, and you see the conductor trying to push it. They're giving it all their might, try, trying to push a bunch of filled rail cars, and ain't nothing happening. Are you hearing me? <laughs> the train is the way to get you to, to, to your destination. I'm going to call this salvation. Okay? Because the destination is salvation. 
most Christians are not the people on board. Most Christians are the people, the conductor. The average Christian, the average Christian, I got you. The average Christian is the one back here trying to push your life along. Uh-huh. And maybe, maybe the blessing will come today. Maybe the breakthrough will come today. Maybe the, 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 the healing will come today. Maybe my love. When you are called to do what? Get in and be the conductor. Because the, en- <laughs> the engine is the Holy Ghost. He's driving, man. He's driving. He's driving. He's telling you, come on, get it up to speed. Come on, come on, come on. I got you. I'm right here. All I need you to do is stay on the track. Just, just keep, keep your eyes focused. Stop looking at why things, what's going on behind you is behind you. You got you to gotta look forward. Stay forward momentum. You got to stay focused on your destiny. Look, in front of you is heaven. In front of you is eternity. In front of you is God. In front of you is prosperity. In front of you, in front of you, in front of you. But don't look back. You get in there and you start pulling, doing things that you didn't do before. You get up in the morning, so to speak, and you're driving this engine now. You're driving. You know, I know Jesus take the wheel and all that kind of stuff. I think that's for unbelievers. But anyway, I'm just saying. Oh, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you remember something that Paul wrote to Titus. And Titus, Titus, he says, he says, building yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. And you got a, you got a long week of track in front of you. You know that tomorrow brings challenges that you just can't tell people about. So now's the time. The Holy Spirit is saying, pray in the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, you start feeling this charge, this momentum. He says, lift your hands and give me praise. But I'm at home. That's okay. It's the best place to do it. Don't nobody see you but me and you. So let's just worship the master. Let's worship the father. Oh, oh, you made it through midweek. And he says, listen, spend 15 more minutes in prayer. And you're down there. Father, I thank you. I don't understand what's going on, but I know Holy Spirit is here with me. He's leading me. He's the power behind my engine. He is the one that is causing me. He is making me not yield to the, my flesh and my desires. And the next thing you know, I get up out of that prayer time. I'm ready to just take the devil and rip him to shreds. And all of a sudden, Saturday night comes and and I'm looking forward to the gathering of the saints on Sunday. It's going to be a great time. Angels will be there. Power of Holy Ghost will be there. Revival and awakening will come. Ain't no better way to live. But when we stop living, we start pushing. Had a, had a, <laughs> heard a joke. I'll end it on this joke. Heard a joke. This guy was down south. He was a salesman. And he was running late. And he got to the train yard. The train was gone. Just happened to be two train jokes, but that first one's not a joke. That's an illustration. And man, he's running. He's got his bag trying not to let his papers go. And he's running behind that track. He's running. And he's, the train is just pulling off, pulling off. And he's got his tickets already. But the train just leaves him and he just stops. He's like. So he starts walking, turns around. And this old guy's sitting on the porch. He says to him, he says, hey, did you miss your train? He said, no, I routinely run behind them just because I have nothing better to do. (laughs) Don't miss your train. Don't push your train. Come on now. Stand to your feet.